Okay, uh, I had a, we decided that, uh, or I decided we want to have a uh, manuscript commander's call on one, one topic only this week, and that is on identity theft. It has become very, very obvious and apparent to me that this is a crime that is going to affect most of you, if not already. Uh, when I've had the opportunity, unfortunately, to see people go through um, a deployment line and, and, and be on the phone right then and be notified that they have been a victim of identity uh, theft. And that is a very serious crime. It's frustrating, it takes years to correct, and you need to know more about it. Let me just remind you of one thing. We've got a series of speakers we're going to talk to you today, and I'm not going to waste any time getting them because it's just that important. But if you don't leave here with anything else, I want you to leave here with one phrase. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when you are going to be impacted by identity theft. Okay? It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. So this is not one of those standard briefs where you come in and if you're on mid-shift and you, you, you're about to, you know, you're about half com comatose. This is not one of those guys. We're going to have a series of briefs uh, today and tomorrow, um, two today for active duty and one tomorrow for, for spouses. But if your spouses are interested in coming in either one of the two today or either the one later on this afternoon, they are more than welcome. Okay? We're going to try to get everybody advised of this. It's just that serious. Let me tell you, I'm, I've been a victim of identity theft, okay? And it is nothing like being impacted by someone you can't see. It, it is a serious crime, one that can't be repeated. I don't care what you see in the movie. It's funny on the movie and stuff, but when it's happening to you, it is a very serious, very serious uh, issue. And we've got some folks here going to talk to you about it. We've got some personal testimony about someone who's going through it right now. Okay? If I can't get your attention today, then I don't know what it's going to take to get your attention. Okay? For those of you who are married, you need to go home and tell your spouse about it. There are protective tools that you need to put in place to take care of yourself. And they range from very, very, uh, very, very robust, rigorous kinds of things to just simple credit monitoring. Okay? Um, most of the times, these folks do not waste time uh, looking at your calendar to determine when it is that they're going to impact your life. Okay? These things are sold. Let me tell you this specific case. About 17 months ago, there was an alpha roster that was stolen out of this maintenance group. Okay? Anybody ever seen a real alpha roster? Okay. What all does it have on it? Everything, right? Socials, birthdays, all those things that people use. Remember, what do they, what do they ask you for when you don't have the passcode or something, and you're trying, you're trying to verify your identity? Birthday, right? Addresses. All those things that, are, that you can find in something that we hold on to for readiness issues, okay? We've gotten to the point now where people are, have sold that alpha roster, and they're going right down the alphabet. So let's just guess uh, that you're probably the letter L or the letter M. You probably haven't been touched yet. We're somewhere around G or H right now, okay? Somewhere around G or H. If you happen to fall between A and F, don't consider yourself uh, lucky, because what happens with these things is they get, they get sold to private brokers, okay? And in this case, uh, they were sold in, in the Midwest of the United States, okay? And so people use those. They, they tend to um, do a shotgun kind of approach and see if whatever they're trying to do um, will, will not be cooked or fried, right? It's an it's a, it's a industry standing. I hate to call it an industry, but at this point, it is an industry. Right? And what they'll do is they'll just see, they'll hit $1.50, $2.50, $3 or whatever. And if you haven't gotten a block on it, say for instance your credit card or your identity has just been stolen, they'll see how far they can go. Right? To the point that they do things like pay your own credit card bill just so they can keep the dog on card alive. There's all kinds of activities going on. You have to be perfectly aware of what kinds of uh, vulnerabilities you have. And that's the point of this morning's conversation. Okay? Um, it is a very serious issue, um, and I need you guys to pay particular attention to address and cover down on this because it is a big deal. Okay? So I've asked a series of folks to come up and talk to you a little bit today uh, about what are those things that, we need to, that you need to be concerned with, how you might be able to get through this process, what kinds of tools you need to, to play. And if you find yourself a victim of identity theft or any other financial crime, who are the first people that you need to talk to? What actions do you need to take right off the bat? Okay. So without further ado, Sue, why don't you come on up? Good morning. Good morning. So a couple of quick questions. How many people have credit cards in 
here? How many people have debit cards? How many people have smartphones? Any of those can cause you to be a, a victim of identity theft beyond um, what we talked about with the alpha roster. Uh, if anybody knows me, uh, I signed homework, so you guys are all going to get homework tonight to do. Um, the policy is you do your homework, you get the benefit. You don't do your homework, you get uh, you are where you are today or worse off in this case. So I just want to bring a couple of things home for uh, identity theft. Um, first of all, look at those breaches. And I had to go back and look at who court uh, Venturas is. By the way, they're a subsidiary of Experian. And they do what is called public court records. So public court records have been compromised. Uh, Adobe, eBay, everybody's heard of Target, the Target uh, one, during uh, Black Friday, right? Last year, Black Friday. All those credit cards, debit cards that were compromised. Uh, Home Depot, we still don't know how big Home Depot is. It's the same identity theft process that Target went through, except for a longer uh, period of time. So they're still trying to figure out how many people have been compromised um, with Home Depot. They estimate it to be the largest compromise currently. And then I want you to look at number seven. That one hits directly home. In 2009, I got notified three times, one by the VA that my, I was compromised, one by my government travel card that I was compromised, and one by TriWest that I was compromised within three months. Those are all three attempt possibilities that I could be um, a victim of identity theft. How many people have gotten their credit card stolen? Their information, sold somebody, uh, purchased something in their name? Four times on that one. How about a debt collector calling you for a debt you weren't even aware of that was yours or was yours? How many people in here? How many people have not received, uh, have had problems with their tax returns? Didn't receive a refund? Maybe somebody else took their refund. These are all different types of identity theft. So I want to go through some of them. The most common that people see is financial. Uh, and credit card is the most common along with debit cards of being compromised. I would rather have my credit card compromised than my debit card. There is a break in my finances with a credit card. There is no break with the debit card. They have access then to my bank account and to drain it um, using that debit card. If I don't report it within two days, I'm liable for $500. If I don't report it within six, it, within uh, 180 days, six months, I am uh, liable for the whole amount. On a credit card, the worst case scenario, you are liable for 50 bucks. 50 bucks. There's more protection on a credit card than a debit card. Um, one of the other things uh, that I was amazed at, having been a financial counselor for a long time, I had a gentleman in my office who thought his ex-wife drained his bank account until we looked at the bank statement and he saw a deposit of 10 cents in there. That is somebody doing a probe into his bank account and then later once he found out it was a valid account, he had a valid account number and a routing number, he was able to start draining the account and they were making drains on the account uh, for uh, small purchases, uh, but slowly draining it. And he was totally unaware of it until he looked at, I looked at his bank statement. Uh, when I looked at it, I noticed it. Social security, um, your social security number is probably your most you know, precious thing you have. That with your birth date um, and your mother's maiden name is the easiest way to not just to not only steal your uh, information financially, maybe open accounts, but also to take advantage of medical. They can access medical with that. They can get a passport, a driver's license, all these different things in your name. Most of this is 
totally unaware <coughs> to you. If you have a monitoring service, your monitoring service is only looking at the financial of identity theft. It does not look at the rest of identity theft that's out there. And by the way, children are the most vulnerable for identity theft. What's so precious about a job? Is it, huh? Innocence, they are pure, right? They have a pure credit history. What if I was able to take that information and purchase a home with it? My son, and by the way, the majority of identity theft, even though we think of those cyber crimes out there, 50% of identity theft is committed by people who know you. Your parents know you, your ex-spouse knows you, your ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend knows you. Those are the people most likely to commit a crime against you. And I had the misfortune, I, you know, I, I had a lot of challenges. I had a young man in my office who was under the process of getting a security clearance. And he had a foreclosure on his credit report that uh, the security, security system was want, wanting to know more about. The problem was he was only 19, married, he had a child, he didn't purchase that house. His dad purchased that house in his name. And he had the moral dilemma of, do I file a police report on my dad, or do I claim bankruptcy? He chose to claim bankruptcy, and I told him, tell your dad you touch credit one more time, you'll take him to jail. These are some of the warning signs and not as sometimes the warning signs are at the most inconvenient moment that you're going to find out if you're a victim of identity theft. When you're purchasing a house and the lender comes in and says, I'm sorry, I can't approve that because of something in your credit report. You're up for security clearance and find out that you've been compromised. These are a couple of things that are happening right now. Some of it could be from the alpha roster, but it could be from a larger amount of things. I want you to know that all of you could be a victim right now, and you don't even know it. I could be a victim, and I don't know it. I don't think the issue is whether you're going to be a victim. I think the issue is, do you know what to do to protect yourself <coughs> and to recover if you are a victim of identity theft. Those are the things that we have some control of. We don't have control of being a victim. We have control of protecting ourselves as much as possible and to recover as quickly as possible. Number one, pull your annual credit report. That's your first homework assignment. Look at that credit report. I don't want you to just, I had, had a gal in my office um, she looked at it, she said, it all looks good to me, and she looked at it online and left it. Well, if you're not printing that credit report, you can't go in there and look at it with a fine-tooth comb. You can't go back and look at, are all these addresses my address? Are these names my names or variations for misspellings of my name? Are all these accounts accounted for? whether they're closed or open. And who's running inquiries on me? You want to know that. In this case, the reason that we're able to know that there is mass identity theft was because Comcast of Chicago and DirecTV of Los Angeles ran inquiries for credit. Now, here's the irony. Is the guy who had really bad credit was probably not victimized. He victimized himself already and trashed his own credit. So all those with great credit are the ones people really want. And in this case, they were actually getting the equipment from Comcast, selling it on the black market, and by the way, you owe the bill. And debt collectors are calling. But the great thing, the only great thing about this is Mount Home Police Department has worked with us very diligently on filing these reports, getting information in, and the debt collector has also been working with us really closely because they get the same message over and over. I live in Mountain Home, Idaho, and they're able to uh, tell you what you need to do to uh, clear that debt collection. So those are a couple of things. You get one free annual credit report from each agency. 
You can take them all at once, or you can stagger them every four months and look at your credit that way, every four months. Next homework assignment. Cannot emphasize this one enough for you guys. Active duty fraud alert, military fraud alert, these are some common terms for it. That fraud alert stays on the credit report for one year. That means anybody seeking credit in your name, they have to contact you and verify that it's you. If you had that fraud alert on, most likely they're going to call you, even if it was Comcast, to verify that you were getting credit. If you're a victim of identity theft and you have completed all your paperwork, you can submit that, a copy of that paperwork to the credit reporting agencies and that fraud alert can stay on for seven years. So you've got seven years of what we consider the minimal amount of protection. So with military, since we're coming and going all the time, that military fraud alert is important to us. Um, most civilians can put a fraud alert on for three months at a time. Uh, you have a year. Make it an anniversary. How many people get junk mail? If you ever look in your junk mail, you get all these catalogs. Please share. There's contact information in there for you, right? There's an application for you to file with that uh, company, Finger Hut or whoever, um, so that uh, you can make purchases. This is something that uh, thieves like to take. So to reduce your risk, uh, or credit card offers. How many people get credit card offers in the mail? From places you, you have no interest in. 1885 opt out. We call this the do not mail list. We'll get you there. And you don't have to worry right now about writing all this information down. I don't expect you to. I plan on sending you a do-it-yourself identity theft kit that you can take all these measures right off of this uh, document. I'm sending it out to the whole group. I've sent it out before. I like to send out stuff to you guys all the time. So you can eliminate junk mail. The ultimate lockdown. Has anybody got a credit freeze in Anyway, okay, so I got a couple of people with a credit freeze. Your credit is so locked down that on, you can't go online and pull your own credit report. You have to mail in that, that request for a credit report. It's so locked down. Your current creditors can see you. No one else can see you. If they can't see you, they're not going to lend money in your name. They're not going to. So if you're looking to buy a car, you're going to say, this is a little bit of inconvenience because I can't get an auto loan. But you have the ability to unlock it whenever you need to. And then you can lock it back down. If you're a victim of identity theft, this is free. If you're not, it's a low, low cost of $6 because you're in the state of Idaho right now. That's $6 per credit reporting agency. So we're talking to $18 to lock down. If you want to unlock it, that's free of charge. Lock it down again, it's going to cost you another $6. But that is a small, small price to pay for peace of mind. I have a... Can you do one of those on a child? You can only do one on a child if the child's already been a victim of identity theft. Otherwise, he has no credit report. But that's a great question. So, in fact, if you want to make sure your child is not a victim of identity theft, apply for a credit report. If the credit reporting agency comes back and says, hey, we don't have any record, you're saying thank you. But until then, there's no way of controlling for a child. Read your bank statements are, and credit card statements. Are all those transactions <coughs> yours? And your cell phone bill. Check yourself. <coughs> are all those transactions yours? Are you getting charged for a service on your cell phone bill that you didn't ask for? Now, my funny story here is my son. I looked at my cell phone bill and I got a $10 charge on it for love connections. Now, he was a teenager at the time and he had a phone, and I'm like, wait a minute, it wasn't a smartphone, but it didn't matter. It wasn't a smartphone. And it was on his phone number. And I said, what are you doing? What, I mean, if you're a teenager, you don't need
need love connection. You know, that type of thing. He said, Mom, I didn't do that. And that was the first time I realized that anybody who has his full phone number, you don't think about your phone number this way, there are services that can be charged to your cell phone. They could be online services. They don't have to be anything that you use your cell phone for. So I have to call up my cell phone company and find out that I have the capability of locking down third-party charges, all with my cell phone number. Third-party charges to my cell phone number at $10 a pop or more. And I asked her, because I always have a rep on the line, I like to ask her lots of questions. And it's really common, third-party charges on a cell phone. Just, you know, how convenient is that? Nobody thinks their cell phone number is vulnerable. They think their social security number is, but not their cell phone number. So his love connection got disconnected. We didn't have to worry about it. I, had, I couldn't talk about taking away that $10 charge, but uh, uh, I have that on all of our cell phones all the time, is making sure there's no third-party charges. In the old days, we used to get a social security statement in the mail. And then they went electronic, and people forgot to look. It used to tell you how much you would get in retirement once you hit uh, retirement age of 67. The other thing you can look for in here is, is the amount of money listed for my income the same as my income? <coughs> is it the same as my W-2? Or if I have multiple jobs, is it the additive effect of those? If your income is higher on your Social Security statement, you're a victim of identity theft. In this case, for employment, somebody used your Social Security number to get employment, and those Social Security taxes are being accredited to your account. Now, what's interesting, this was not considered a crime until about 2005, when this lady in Washington found out that her Social Security statement said she made $25,000 more than she did. And the court system says, unless you have had a victimization in the sense of something taken from you, we're not going to consider this a crime but her social security number was taken from her. There was the possibility somebody could get a loan in her name, get medical insurance in her name. And so she fought it, but I thought it was interesting that they said since she benefited from the extra income allocated to her account, I saw a news article on this too, not too long ago, it says um, it, that uh, illegal immigration could be a benefit to people in their retirement accounts. I think that's kind of the wrong, place to take it. Um, you're a victim of identity theft. Look at that social security statement. Look at it once a year. Make a, make a point to have a security day at least once a year where you're pulling your credit report, you're checking your social security statement, you're figuring out where you are financially. <coughs> what is the most important tool you have for your finances? A lot of you do your banking with your cell phone. You have everything tied to your cell phone. All your connections, all your information is tied to your cell phone. And I, I didn't think of this. Um, I do a lot of research all the time uh, on finances. And this came up and I thought, you know, we all need a data breach plan. What happens when our wallet gets stolen? What happens when our cell phone gets stolen? <laughs> How can we control the situation? Having a copy of the front and back of every one of your credit cards is important. Having a, the ability set up ahead of time to swipe, to wipe off your data on your cell phone if your cell phone got stolen. That you have that capability. Do you know you have that? Has anybody done that? Set it up? How hard was it to set up? It's not hard at all. Not hard at all. How many? How much time did it take you? Um, with, with the iPhone, Apple has a, um, once you have an account, you log into your, your phone, log into your phone, because it, it's 
safe with your phone. And if your phone gets stolen, you can track it that way. Or if you can't find your phone, you can set you can set a signal that will erase every data on your phone the moment it gets online. There you go. As soon as your phone gets online, it will wipe it off. That's with an iPhone, Android phones. Think about that. When you're getting your cell phone and you're going to your carrier, ask your carrier, how can I set it up now to wipe my phone? By the way, that's my homework right there, wiping my phone. Not that I have anything on it. I only take pictures with it. I text with it. And I'm lucky if I talk on it. My family thinks, why do I have a cell phone? Uh, but, but I think that's a, an important feature that we have to think about. A cell phone is critical for us. Just recently, new cell phones are going to have kill switches to make that phone totally inoperable. But until then, you can be a victim of identity. The, the problem is we don't, we, it says to act as quick as possible. As soon as you are totally aware, as soon as you are aware that you're a victim, you need to take action immediately. Do not hesitate. Do not wait until the end of the day. There's a couple of things you can do very quickly, and the rest of it can take a little time to do. But I want you to act as quickly as possible. The first thing is put a fraud alert on your credit reports immediately. If it's not, if you have that active duty fraud alert, you've already taken this step. It's done. Okay, so you've got the fraud alerts on. Pull your credit report. By the way, if your credit card got stolen, it's going to take several months for anything to show up on your credit report. So it may take a while. You may have to um, pull your credit report now to see where you are. Consider that baseline. Pull your credit report again in a couple of months. And by the way, if, if you've been compromised and, like, as an example, Target offered free monitoring service. Take the advantage of those monitoring services. Pull that report again and again to see if there are changes in it. Create identity theft report. This is filing a police report at the police station. It's most important. And then also completing identity theft affidavit with the Federal Trade Commission. When you complete those two actions, you have an identity theft report. This gives you more ability to take care of problems when you have that. You can then get uh, a free credit freeze. You get free credit reports, those type of things, all available to you. So identity theft affidavit, police report is your full identity theft report. That's a lot of information. And then you're going to have to go down and tease apart everything that's totally legitimately yours and what is not yours. If your credit card has been compromised, shut it down. Contact them, say, I need it shut down until we figure out what's going on. They'll do purchases. They may give you a new card in the mail. Um, it was very uh, interesting. I, I was at the commissary, trying to use my credit card. To, to buy groceries, and I kept getting denied, and I was so frustrated, I finally used my debit card, which I hate doing, I do not use my debit card unless I have to get cash. Other than that, there, my debit card is never used. Uh, I don't like my bank account being compromised. Um, so I went home, and I called, using the website for my bank, I called the number, and verified that, yes, um, I was compromised, and they had to close my account. And they thought the commissary was also one of those transactions because they just never heard of the commissary before. And uh, I said, no, that was me trying to get groceries today. So they shut it down. It took a couple of weeks to get the new card in the mail. And of course, then I had anything I had automatically being paid out of that credit card had to be shut down, transferred to the new card once it got up and running. So it's a lot of inconvenience on us. Um, for the most part. Most of identity theft is inconvenience. If you are a victim, you do not have to pay those debts outside of that $50 on a credit card. That's the maximum you are liable for. 
This booklet right here, if you're a victim, you can get this booklet online and it will go through social security identity theft, tax identity theft, medical identity theft, all of that is in there on how to clear those items. You just go through the book slowly, taking your time to make sure you are completing the actions. Uh, I purchased a uh, identity theft recovery program from uh, what I considered a very reliable, legitimate company. Um, I've known the individual who runs the company. I've heard him speak. He's an excellent speaker. But I didn't see anything in there that I see up here in this booklet. And this booklet's free from the Federal Trade Commission. And we have it at the Airmen and Family Readiness Center. So you can go to the Airmen and Family Readiness Center and pick up a copy of it. I always keep a, a good supply, several hundred uh, copies at a time. That's how I purchase. Um, it's all free to us, so I give it free to you guys. But you can also go online and pull it. It's not a bad idea to pull it just to be aware of what you're, you can do to uh, mitigate the issues of identity theft. Uh, th these are all things that, that we need to take control of. So, sir, did you want to say? Yeah, here. Just okay. Hey, everybody stand up for me. Stretch it out. works better than a, than a personal testimony, okay? And so uh, we want to have Katie Galdoris come up and talk to you about some of the things that she and her family are going through. If your name sounds familiar, it should, okay? So this is homegrown. This is uh, something that's happening in our own backyards. And uh, I'm really appreciative to her and her family. This is obviously a very private matter in many ways, uh, but at the same time, she's agreed to talk to you about some of the things that she and her family are going through. And the thing that I want you to remember is Remember we talked about Murphy and, and how this can happen at a time that's that's uh, not convenient to you. Listen to how true that is in this case. Hey, thanks a lot. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Katie Galvadoras, and some of you may not know me, and some of you may. Um, I'm just a normal spouse. I'm a, a maintainer spouse. Um, and, you know, with three kids and a dog, and bills, and car payment, house payment, and the only difference is that we're going through identity theft right now. Um, one thing I wanted to find out before I start, let me have a show of hands. How many of you think you're doing everything you can to protect your information? Okay, a few of you? Okay, well I can tell you three months ago, if you'd asked me that question, we're doing everything. I would say we're probably overly diligent. We shred every piece of paper that comes into our house with our personal identifiable information on it. We don't do any online banking. We don't access accounts from cell phones. We don't even call about accounts unless we're calling from a landline, okay? So we're doing everything, right? We're protected, right? Not the case. July 29th, my husband starts getting phone calls. He gets one on the 29th, one on the 30th. Um, two different credit card companies that we currently have accounts through. Did you authorize an additional user on your account? And he says no. So they have been trying to contact us at this point for both of them for about a week. We find out not only did somebody call in saying they were him, they had his full social, they had his mother's maiden name, they had his date of birth, all of his personal information, and they were able to pass all of security checks that the credit cards were requiring, and, author and authorize additional users on the accounts. Credit cards were sent to Chicago in someone else's name, and even though one of the credit card companies, I'll call them credit card D, um, they suspected this wasn't legitimate. However, they couldn't contact us, because not only did they access the accounts, they changed all of our contact information. So my husband's phone number was no longer kids. They added email uh, addresses to the accounts. So they were sending out fraud alerts for over a week to us, but they weren't going to us. They were going to the people who were doing this. Okay, so at this point, they tell us 
What we would suggest is you put passwords on all of your accounts. Everything. Lock everything down. We'll change account numbers. We'll add, you know, we'll issue new cards to you. We'll lock everything down. So we did that. We also contacted the three credit bureaus and told them what was going on. We also contacted every account we have, our bank accounts, our other credit card accounts. We notified everybody. So we should be protected, right? No. So on August 1st, three days later, we now have all of these, these security measures in place, uh, passwords on all of our accounts, these are phone passwords, because we don't do any online banking, right? We call, I call to make a phone uh, payment to our credit card D. And at which point the automated system says to me, do you want to make this payment from your checking account number ending in, I'll just say one, two, three, four. And I think, well, that is not our checking account number. So at this point I realize something's still wrong. And I get a customer service representative on the phone. She asked me my name, my husband's name, his social security number, his date of birth, his mother's maiden name, no, no phone password. This is the same company that three days prior told us to do this. So I, I, I call her on it, obviously. I say, you know, you're supposed to be asking me for a phone password. She can't see it in the notes. She doesn't know anything about it. I said, okay. Well, let's just move to what I was trying to do, and that's to make a phone payment. She says, well, ma'am, I don't see that you have a payment due. You have a zero balance on this account. I said, no, I don't. She said, well, yeah, I see a pending payment in the amount of the full balance from account one, two, three, four. Isn't that your Wells Fargo account? I said, no, we've never had a Wells Fargo check. So now I'm realizing that the, account, the new account number for the same account has been compromised also. The person didn't ask me for a, pass, a phone password like she was supposed to, and now people, now whoever has accessed the account again is using a payment as a leverage tool to try and get into the account, and now they've accessed it again. So at this point I asked to talk to the front department. I spend the next probably two hours of my lunch hour um, on the phone with the fraud department, at which time the fraud investigator tells me, over the course of, from the 29th through the 31st, after we shut that initial countdown, these guys were calling back, calling into the customer service representatives, trying to gain access to the account, to the new account number. They called back, they called back, this went on for almost 36 hours. So at, at this point, you know, that just puts things into perspective. Who of, of you have 36 hours to fight these guys? Because this is all they do. And they did gain access to the account eventually. They put that fraudulent payment on there, they got new cards issued, and now we're on our third account number at this point. Okay. So, that's August 1st. So fast forward about a week. Now we've put credit freezes on everything. We've put passwords on everything. We have notified everybody who hasn't been affected of our creditors. And we start getting phone calls from all of our other credit card companies asking us, did we authorize additional users? But because we had notified them, they knew to shut things down. We also received from TransUnion, one of the credit bureaus, notification that somebody has tried to buy a vehicle on our account, on our credit. So they were buying a car through a credit agency of some sort, and because we had that fraud alert and that freeze on there, they were shut down. But my husband called the <coughs> auto financing company. And he said, you know, he calls and he says, what is this, you know, I just got a fraud alert that somebody's trying to buy a vehicle on my credit. And they said, well, didn't you just call here? And he said, no. And the lady said, haven't you been calling here all day? 
So once again, they got shut down and they're calling, calling, calling to try and gain access, to try and convince somebody. You know, and they're just looking for that one person, that one customer service representative who's going to pick up the phone and listen to what they're saying. Oh, I forgot my password. Or, oh, I don't, somebody stole my identity, so I don't know what's going on. They're going to use whatever they can to convince whoever they need to to give them access and give them what they want. So it appears that things are working in our favor. You know, things are getting shut down. And about a week and a half later, um, we're now checking everything almost daily. And I don't know, some of you probably know my husband's in on terminal leave because he's retiring. So he's got that time to do that, right? I mean, none of you do. I don't. <coughs> but he's able to be at home, and he has spent countless hours, almost every single day, doing this, checking every single account, every single credit card, every other possibility that he can think of to try and mitigate this. So now we get a phone call from credit card D again. Did you authorize an additional <coughs> user on your account? No. Oh, well, hmm. because you called in and he says, I don't understand why you guys can't figure out your own process. You suggested we put a phone password on this account. We did that. You allowed them access again. Then you changed the account number again. You're still allowing them access. At this point, they have charged over $10,000 to our credit card. We're three account numbers into this, and they still can't figure out their own process of how to keep these guys out. So, and then the other thing is, is they're making payments again for us. $21,000 worth of payments in six payments over the course of a week. So now we know that's their other tool. That is their leverage to gain access to the account. They're saying, well, I just want to make a payment. I can't remember my phone password. Oh, okay. Here's the account number. Let's let you in so you can make $21,000 of payments in a week. Okay? Which we didn't even have balance with their $10,000 plus dollars and our balance. It wasn't even a $21,000 balance. So they're overpaying the account for us. But these are all fraudulent also, which looks bad on our credit also. Okay, so at some point, after all of this is happening, and we're feeling, I feel like we're not making any grounds. You know, we're not, we're not fixing this. It's not, not going away. It's a daily occurrence. I, I leave one evening in search of something. I don't know what. I go out um, in Mountain Hall. I find a police officer, and I tell him what's going on. And at this point, we're three weeks into this, and we have no idea how this has occurred. None. We're trying to figure out, did they access our computer? You know, we don't do any online banking. How is it that we, we're, we have all these things in place, but somehow they still have our information? So I'm telling the police officer, I'm trying to get guidance from him as to what to do next. I tell him the story, and I as soon as I say the words Chicago, which is where all these credit cards have gone, been sent to, he says, I bet that's part of that Alpha Roster Comcast thing. And I said, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. I said, we didn't have any Comcast, anything. He says, well, that's how it started. And we're, you know, it's under investigation. We're not sure if that's what's happening. But that's what we think, that an alpha roster of an uh, organization on base has gone missing and got sold. And I said, well, my husband's in maintenance. And he said, well, that could be it. So now we at least have some clarity as to where it could possibly be coming from. Doesn't fix it, and our information's out there of what he's saying. Is true. But at least we have some idea of where this is coming from. So now we know we have all these security measures in place, passwords, credit freezes, fraud alerts, law enforcement's involved. They're also working with on-base law enforcement. 
law enforcement in Chicago. We should be protected, right? Wrong. <coughs> September 4th, my husband's doing his daily calls to all of our credit card companies and bank accounts. He calls credit card D, who is the one that has been so diligent about our information. <coughs> and they won't allow him access to our account. And he says, well, how's that possible? Here's the phone password. Oh, well, the phone password's been changed. So he loses it. He goes on this rampage on the phone. I don't know how you guys are figuring this out. You know, I don't know why you keep allowing access to these guys. Shut the account down. Completely shut it down. I don't want it. I don't want it card. I don't want it. I don't want an account with you at all. Shut everything down. The next day, he calls them back to see if they will talk to him because they would basically wouldn't even talk to him that day. He then, by then, they have figured out that he is who he says he is because he doesn't want any more charges on the account. He doesn't want a new card. He doesn't want a card sent to Chicago. And so they have shut the account down. Um, so that's where we're at right now. This is really, I mean, we're, we're still going through this every day. But the thing is, is it doesn't go away. You know, it may, you might get a little bit of a reprieve for a few days, and then something else comes up. Every day you go to the mailbox, you're wondering, what is happening today? What is? What am I going to find when I open the mailbox? Every time the phone rings, you're wondering, is this one of the credit card companies calling? Or is this a new creditor calling to say, hey, are you authorizing a house to be bought? You know, we don't know. And you pretty much, it, you, you're pretty much at their mercy. And the thing is, is they don't care you have a sick kid. They don't care you're about to go on the point. They've got all the time in the world to deal with, to deal with this stuff. You know, you're going through normal day, everyday life, and this is their life. So they can do it, they can take as much time as it needs as they need to get into your and to get into your information and to get what they need. So <clears throat> I guess the point I'm trying to make is don't think you're protected. Don't for one second think that just because you haven't seen something come through your credit report that isn't about to happen or that you have existing accounts, that's the other thing. All of this started with our existing accounts that never would have shown up on the Three Credit Bureau information because those accounts already existed. Somebody wasn't trying to take out new credit on us. So until we got information from those credit card companies, once they had to go back into the history of our accounts and find our real phone numbers, that was only, it was only then that we found out that this was going on. So I guess if, if you take anything from this, it's just don't assume that you're protected. Be diligent about checking your stuff. Even if you think you have all, all the security measures in place, you probably don't. These guys are going to be able to find a way around it. And you almost have to start thinking like a criminal. Colonel Lawrence and I discussed this. You pretty much have to start thinking like what would they do next to try and circumvent what they're doing. So at this point, that's where we're at with our situation. Um, you know, it's an everyday thing. And at some point, maybe they'll get sick of trying our stuff and they'll go to the next name on the list. But they're always gonna have his social, his date of birth, his mother's maiden name. We can't get that back. And changing it through like the Social Security Administration, they don't advise it. So it may be five years from now that this comes up again. Or maybe it's my information next time. Because they have all of his, maybe it's mine next time. Or maybe it's our three, our three daughters. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But at this point, that's where we're at. And you guys just need to do as I say, not as I do. Because you think that you're doing everything, and there's way more you can be doing. Thank you. Concern. Uh, one, it's personal. Personal for me and personal for you. Okay. Um, 
Look, man, all kidding aside, I, I don't. Life is tough enough. Life's a struggle all by itself, and you guys don't need any extra stress. Uh, we ask you to do a lot of stuff at work. We push you around the world. Uh, the Air Force asks you to do a lot of things, and you sacrifice you and your families do all the time. And so you don't need something else added to the pile. Okay? You don't need anything else added to the pile. So I, I've asked that you listen. We're going to get the materials out to you. Uh, and you guys, let's have a, a, an honest conversation about this. Um, I, I, look, I, I may not be the smartest person in the room, but I'm smart enough to know that this is a real problem. Okay? And what, what I will tell you is it, it's going to be on you if you decide not to do anything with the information that you've been given today. Okay? It's going to be on you. I, I am trying to do my due diligence, and uh, I hope that you will too. Okay, any questions, concerns about anything that you've heard today? Sir, do we get the name of credit card D? Because uh, I don't want to do business with you. <laughs> <laughs> credit card D may be a good indicator of what said credit card's name might be. I don't know if you want to share that. Okay. Vote if it's covered. Just thank you for the National Credit Card Agencies. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. Okay. Any others? Hey, listen. Um, first of all, thanks to Susan Ruger and Kay Galvadoris for coming out. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna. Now, here's the thing. There's no way that I'm gonna get everybody all the time. Okay, when, when we do these commanders calls. So what are we going to do? One is we're going to hang this out on the SharePoint. Okay, for those folks that are deployed, both uh, TDY and deployed, both in the 89th and 94th support package, along with the folks that are singletons in and around the world, they'll have access to this. I need your help with getting them advised of how bad this problem is and that the tools are available to them. Okay, uh, Airman and Family Readiness Center has a multitude of materials out there. Okay. I'll just tell you this. Go to the Airman and Family Readiness Center if you have an issue before you go and pay money for it because those guys are dressing it up, making it look nice, but they're selling the same stuff that you can 99.9% .9 and maybe even 100% get right here free of charge. Okay? Free of charge. Okay? So I offer that to you. Get it locally, and if you find that you, you've got a deficit for what you're looking for, then, then maybe go out to an outside source. Okay? I, I appreciate uh, you guys doing that. Any other questions at all? Okay, you guys have a good day. You're dismissed. Carry on, please.